I'm Dr. April Kennedy, a nephrologist with Associates in Nephrology, dedicated to serving uh, communities in the southern suburbs and the south side of Chicago. I'm a proud graduate of Xavier University of Louisiana, where the foundation for my medical career was laid. Afterwards, I attended the University of Chicago, Pritzker School of Medicine for Medical School, and then went on to train in internal medicine and nephrology at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I was honored to be able to serve as the chief resident during my time there. I was not always planning on becoming a nephrologist, but during my freshman year of college, I came home from Thanksgiving break and I learned that my dad had started hemodialysis. I did not know that he was sick. I did not know that he had kidney disease. And, and that is where I really began to take an interest in uh, nephrology. The experience that my dad had really drove me to want to focus on how kidney disease affected the black community. And I was able to see through his journey firsthand how devastating having kidney disease was. Watching my dad struggle with kidney disease, um, uh, you know, Dealing with adjusting to having to go to hemodialysis, uh, he did receive a kidney transplant, which is amazing. But just watching him go through all of those things uh, definitely solidified for me that nephrology was the field that I wanted to specialize in. The way that I see my role impacting patient care as a nephrologist is that I hope that my patients know that I see myself in them and they can see themselves in me. I purposely work in the black community because I wanted to make sure that African-American patients were receiving excellent care. I think when you have a doctor that looks like you, uh, there's a, a bit more trust, which kind of makes the journey a little bit easier. Uh, it makes hearing the information easier. And I obviously hope that I'm explaining the information in a way that they can understand. Focusing on the African-American demographic as it relates to kidney health is important to me because uh, common knowledge, African-Americans are four times more likely to suffer from kidney disease than other, other Americans. And, and that in itself makes it important that we, you know, get into this community, have the, have the education, have the discussions, and are, are making sure that we're giving all of the treatment options and uh, giving patients the best chance to, to maintain kidney health. What are the kidneys? Most people have two kidneys. They're located uh, in the lower part of your back. And your kidneys are essentially the organs that are responsible for filtering your blood. So your kidneys work 24 hours a day, seven days a week tirelessly to clean toxins, medications, food products, to clean everything from your blood. And then you excrete that waste out into the urine. Your kidneys also make hormones that help you to regulate your bones. Uh, they make hormones that help you to regulate your blood cells. They make hormones that help you to regulate your blood pressure. So uh, your kidneys are um, performing a lot of functions in your body to keep everything in balance and keep your body in homeostasis. A question that I often get about kidneys are, can you feel pain? A lot of times people will come in with back pain, which is just a common medical complaint, and the first thing they think of is, my kidneys are hurting. But the truth is, your kidneys really don't have a lot of pain sensors, and it usually takes something quite significant, like a very bad kidney infection, or a trauma or a contusion to the kidneys to actually cause them pain. An infection can cause kidney pain if the infection has actually traveled up to the kidney itself. Just having a simple urinary tract infection will not cause pain in the kidney. Uh, you actually have to have something called pyelonephritis, and that's an infection of the kidney itself. That can cause the kidney to have pain. There are two types of kidney damage per se. You could have acute kidney damage or you can have chronic kidney damage. And you might hear those more so described as acute kidney disease or chronic kidney disease. Acute kidney disease is something that happens swiftly. It is usually reversible uh, if we can identify the cause and treat it. You can suffer acute kidney failure from certain medications, severe infectious processes, or even dehydration. With prompt recognition, acute kidney failure is usually reversible. Chronic kidney failure or chronic kidney disease is something that has been happening over time. In chronic kidney disease, the kidneys are still performing some of the functions. They might not be performing the functions optimally, but they are still able to clean your blood, um, keep your body in a, a 
reasonable state of homeostasis, keep your electrolytes and, and the other waste products in balance. Early detection is key when we're speaking of treating patients with chronic kidney disease. The earlier that you know that there is some kidney dysfunction, the earlier that you can begin treatment. And the earlier that you can begin treatment, that means there is a higher likelihood that you're going to be able to save some of the kidney and, and, and lessen progression to end-stage kidney disease or needing dialysis. In the United States, the main causes of chronic kidney disease include diabetes and hypertension, but there are other intrinsic diseases of the kidney that can cause chronic kidney disease. This is usually not reversible as the damage has been slowly being done over time and we're not able to repair those units of the kidneys that are damaged by chronic kidney disease. It is very easy to screen for kidney disease. There's simple routine blood tests and urine tests that can be done. Also making sure that your blood pressure is uh, well controlled and uh, making sure that if you have diabetes, you're keeping your diabetes optimally managed. Oftentimes, there are no signs and symptoms of kidney disease until it is quite advanced. Once it has advanced far enough where that someone may experience signs, um, they are usually what I call very soft signs, things that people often blame on getting older or something simple like that. But they can include fatigue, loss of weight, nausea, poor appetite. Um, sometimes people will experience swelling, difficulty breathing, or itchy skin. But again, a lot of these symptoms don't happen until kidney disease is quite advanced. Another reason why early detection is key. The way patients can recognize when chronic kidney disease has progressed to kidney failure or end-stage renal disease is by looking at the blood work. We look at the GFR, glomerular filtration rate, which tells the percentage in which the kidneys are functioning. And we consider end-stage renal disease or kidney failure when that is at less than 15%. So if you have blood work that has interpreted that your kidney function is less than 15%, you know that you are in kidney failure. The best way to prevent progression of chronic kidney disease to kidney failure is to make sure that you're maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Those changes can include making sure that your blood pressure is under control, making sure that if you have diabetes, your diabetes is under control, um, avoiding smoking cigarettes, uh, limiting your alcohol intake, maintaining a healthy weight, getting enough exercise and sleep are all lifestyle modifications that can slow the progression of chronic kidney disease. A series such as this matters because it has the potential to be transformative for patients who are living with chronic kidney disease. I hope that it will empower patients to uh, have a better understanding of what chronic kidney disease is, have a better understanding of their risk, help them to mitigate their risk factors, and hopefully help them to avoid any progression of chronic kidney disease to end-stage renal disease. <laughs>